Hello and welcome to 2020. This month on the Anne Freed membership, we are going to be looking at the different tools that I use when I'm working as Anne Freed and also tools that I use in my day-to-day -day personal life as well. And the, the first tool that we're going to use or look at rather is mindfulness. Mindfulness is a term that's been used a lot at the moment. Um, you'll, you'll hear it uh, around in social media, on the TV, in education, just generally it is the buzzword. But what is it? Um, so mindfulness really is just living in the present. It is being, being present in this moment and in this moment. It is as simple as that. It's not that simple though because we are used to multitasking. Our brains are used to, or were built, was built really, um, to help us survive. So going right back into the beginning of time, the brain was built for the survival of um, the saber-toothed tiger attack. And we have that fight, flight or freeze built into us to this very day. Now, we might need to use that fight, flight or freeze in different situations, perhaps once or twice in our life. The problem is, is that that instinct um, is, what, is, what we, is what affects us, rather, when we react to different situations and it's what can, can cause stress and anxiety because we tend to have that default, that negative default, um, really because of the survival instinct, we're, we're looking for problems um, and that can escalate in our minds and our storytelling minds can just add on and add on and add on. So that is one of the problems that we have in today's living is that this survival instinct kicks in constantly and we don't have any time to kind of de-stress from it. So that's, that's one aspect of, um, of the mindfulness. One thing I was going to say at this point was that the interesting thing is that scientists have said that it takes only a tenth of a second to notice something negative, but it takes way, way longer to notice anything positive that's going on. I've got a quote here that I would like to, to read, which it says that um, someone said that you can take yourself down with your thoughts far quicker than any enemy can. Mindfulness will help you put a spam filter in your head. And I quite like the idea of the spam filter because that really described it to me really very well, what mindfulness can do. And that brings me, using the word do, brings me to doing and being. We are used to doing all the time. We are active, we're working, we're talking, we're interacting. Um, and it's constant. It really is constant. And doing is normal. But being is normal too. And what we're needing is a balance what is the, be the best way is to have a balance between being and doing. And right now, the majority of us will have it weighted towards the doing. And the balance, the, the being rather, is forgotten about or shoved into the background somewhere. Um, we do need the doing part. We need the doing part of our brain to make snap decisions, problem solving. Um, so it's not that um, we, we want to discard it at all. We need it and we will use it. Um, but the doing part of our brain is also the part that can trigger um, unhelpful cycles of thought and can also um, increase uh, anxiety or stress as well. So in mindfulness, the mindfulness nurtures and develops the being part and that restores the balance and with mindfulness as well we can then consciously switch between doing and being. We are more in control. 
So we're wandering around talking about mindfulness. Um, mindfulness is living in the present right now. The mindfulness practice that we're going to practice in a little while, I'm going to make a separate recording for that, by the way, so it's something that you can go and use without listening to all the chat beforehand, um, is just exactly that. It's practicing mindfulness. We are so used to living on so many different levels that we really do need to practice how to live in the present. And a mindfulness practice is really just sitting, it can be standing, but sitting or standing in an alert, upright but relaxed position. Um, it's important to have the spine um, in an upright position. And we can you can be sitting on the floor as well, it's up to you, sitting on the, on the floor, on your bed, um, in a chair. Then allowing the cho shoulders to drop. And I know I'm the, I do this anyway, but as soon as somebody says, yes, and allow your shoulders to drop, I suddenly realise I was holding them. A lot of people hold tension here. So allow the shoulders to drop. And then just bring the chin, chin gently towards the chest, not a lot, but just down a little bit. And that helps the, with the elongation of the neck. And then if you would like, imagine that there is a string pulling upwards. So that's just, there's just a lot of different things going on there. And during the mindfulness practice, it's better to close your eyes. If that is hard for you, and it is hard for different reasons, it can be really difficult for some people to close their eyes. It's okay. Just look at the floor in front of you in a sort of gentle, fuzzy way. Um, what we're trying to do really is cut out distractions. So that's why it's quite good if you can just close your eyes because that cuts that part out. It's also a good idea to choose a nice quiet place. Maybe set up your own special quiet area, put on a candle, um, dim the lighting, whatever it is, but be sure it's a quiet place where you will not be disturbed for just the 10 minutes. That's all we're needing to do is 10 minutes. Um, so from there, you start noticing the breath. So in the meditation, I'll talk about noticing the in-breath and the out-breath. And you might notice the way your chest or your abdomen or your back move as you take the in-breath and the out-breath. And that is the focus for you. That is what you're going to keep coming back to every time a thought pops into your mind. Because thoughts will pop into your mind because that's what thoughts do. Um, the idea is not to stop the thoughts, but it is... The idea is really to notice the thoughts, but allow the thoughts to travel through like a cloud in the sky um, and not to follow them, not to, you know, if, if for example, um, thinking about what I'm doing tomorrow and I know that I've got to go somewhere tomorrow around lunchtime. So if that thought was to come in when I was practicing mindfulness, something would come in oh, tomorrow and I would just let it go. I wouldn't follow it with, oh, what time do I have to be there? And so on. I would just let that thought go. So that's the idea, is to let it go and immediately come back to that in-breath and the out-breath. The only, it's like all skills, you need to practice it. And initially, you really, really need to be practicing every day. It's only 10 minutes. You could even practice it twice a day, actually. That if you were to practice it twice a day, 10 minutes, that's all, for the whole month of January, you would begin to see a change. If you're just going to sit once every few days, it's like anything. It's, it's not really going to impact on your life. But if you want to use mindfulness to help you with anxiety, with stress, with anger, 
to help you in any tricky situation, then it's worth practicing. So it's worth clearing just that 10 minutes. Instead of watching the telly for 10 minutes or scrolling through social media, just take that 10 minutes out. Um, I think that's about it for now. I'll sort of dip in and out over the week um, to check and see if anybody's left any messages or sent me any messages through the Facebook page or Instagram. Really, if you've got any questions, then please ask. If there's anything you want me to address this month, please just ask. We're going to be looking at other things too. We're going to be looking at EFT. We're going to be looking at 16 guidelines. I'm going to talk a little bit about outdoor well-being, which is something else that I love and do. Um, but as I say, this week, the focus is on mindfulness. So enjoy your week. Make sure you take time to um, follow the 10 minute meditation. Ah, I've just remembered. If you don't need to watch the 10 minute meditation, you can watch it just now for the first time. But if you're out and about, you can set your phone for 10 minutes. There's also an excellent app called Insight Timer. And on that app, there um, you can put in any amount of time, whether it's one minute, 10 minutes, half an hour, and it will let you know when it, to start and finish your meditation. There's also heaps of guided meditations on Insight Timer. So it's worth having a wee look at that as well. So you don't have to watch my 10 minute video. Okay, so have a good week and we'll talk to you later. Bye.